agree with you is as soon as interest rates start to reduce is that we're going to notice that there's even less inventory on the market right. and prices will will continue to rise welcome back to the bamford and co podcast i'm joined with my brother ryan today and we're here to discuss everything real estate we thought it would be interesting to discuss questions that are commonly asked to us every single day if it's not by our clients that are either selling or buying, but also just by anybody that we run into. It seems like they ask a realtor these questions. So I guess the number one questions people ask is, what's happening in today's real estate market? So I'll let Ryan answer that because that's a skill testing question and there's a lot to it. So. <laughs> well, hopefully I got the skills here, Greg. <laughs> well, you know, is it, it is a common question that we get from absolutely anybody out there is that anybody that has a common interest everybody's got a common interest with real estate so um the one thing is that our our market is divided into a bunch of different parts so when, that's kind of a loaded question when we say the single family market might not be the same as condominium or townhouses right um right. now is it obviously supply and demand we have a extreme um extreme low amount of, of listings in, in Saskatoon's current market. You know, I know Greg was saying, I believe you checked the stats this morning, it was about 392 listings, single family listings um, for a population of just over 300,000, right? So as right. you can imagine, is that supply and demand has resulted in a lot of our properties, you know, going in multiple offers, going first day, um, if not you know, going well above list price if they're actually listed at market value and and everything's done in the property. Homes that are move-in ready and are show home like is that those are the ones that are getting, I guess, the most activity and and are going for the highest price points in yeah, today's market. I I agree with you. We must work together. Uh, on the other hand, what I also find interesting is that when people go to put an offer on a property and then a multiple offer scenario you're looking at past comparables. So you're looking at comparables that have been sold for the last 30, 60, and 90 days. You're not looking at tomorrow's prices. But if you want to beat out people on those properties, you have to look at what's the value tomorrow. Because there's a lot of people that get uh, into a scenario where they've put an offer on how many houses and they've missed out on, let's say, three properties now they're in a different scenario to where now that property is worth $30,000 more than what it originally was. And now they're trying to then push that price so they don't keep on missing out. So it depends on how many offers are on a property and who you're competing with, which you can't always, uh, I guess, know. But those are things that we look at when we're in that scenario is what's that future price going to be? For sure. And I have a lot of clients that have been, you know, taking possession, say in the last couple months, you know, prime example, we had a townhouse the other day that we purchased a couple thousand dollars over list price. And next thing you know, a week later, we had the same same townhouse from the same developer down the street that was listed for $20,000 higher without basement development. So I know exactly what you're saying is that a lot of our clients are actually, you know, even though they're paying a little bit more today with the pro with the amount that the, the market is increasing so quickly is that they're making money by the time they take possession. Right. Right. So sure. I think that that's a great point is that, you know, you are looking at things, you know, today's what sells today is going to be our comparables for the next. Yeah. I, I, I truthfully feel from just watching this and we probably went up about depends on the neighborhood, but 10 to 15% since probably February. Mm -hmm. And the way that multiple offers are happening right now, I see the market going up another five to 10% by the end of September. That would just be my, that's just my gut feeling and my guesstimate. We can't guarantee that, but with no inventory and also looking at how many builders aren't building the capacity anymore, mm -hmm. where are we getting these properties from? Uh, another thing that I didn't really take into consideration when I look at people that are, there's a lot of people right now moving out of their homes that they've been in for a long period of time and moving into a, a townhouse or a condo. I looked at, okay, so these bungalow townhouses, they're going to be in huge demand. I didn't really think about how many people are coming from the, the, uh, the rural side of things right. in Saskatchewan. So in the last four months, I've sold five different people that came from Swift Current, Tisdale, Waka, and, and other parts of it, sold farms, and now I'm moving to Saskatoon, which then also eat up the inventory, and they're not bringing something to market. So yeah. that makes it even more complicated. And they're also paying cash. 
some of them too, right? Yeah. So that's the whole negotiating side of that is a really, it's really tough when you're in that multiple offer situation. Yeah. Right. Uh, question for you, which another question I guess that people continually to ask us is which market is the hottest? Because yeah, cyclically is that our, our market does follow the school year. Right. Is that that's tip pretty typical. Now, in the last couple of years, especially since COVID hit, is that we've had a hot, hot market all the way throughout the year. Right. So typically, like right now, is that I did notice a little bit of a, um, you know, as summer got, you know, as the weather got really hot in July, is that I did notice, you know, obviously schools out at the end of June is that we do have a couple of weeks here where a lot of people are on vacations. Rightfully so. Makes sense. Right. Um, at the same time, is that, you know, that our market's not going to slow down. I don't think for years to come is it's, you know, the lack of inventory, um, the, the population growth is playing a huge factor in how, um, in how many available houses we have. And then, like you said, is that the amount of builders that are, they're not building single family homes anymore is that they're either leaving the province because there's no margins to actually make money doing it, or they're changing a lot to rental housing. Yeah, I agree on that. And so we've been, our job as realtors is to look at, and where the market's going, and also to interview different uh, areas like builders and contractors and so forth. We also don't have enough trades within Saskatchewan, which then make everything that much higher price to be able to develop out, right? So I think they say that our market, just on the new construction side, has went up 35% uh, pre-COVID. Right. right. So would you would you agree on that number? It's kind of. I would probably. I would say yeah, and it's still going up. Right. You know, is the problem? Yeah, is it? You know, I know the builders aren't making a whole lot of money, but the consumers are still paying for it, and the cost of the material for the people to build is right. It has has went up at certain times double and even sometimes triple for the material costs. Yeah. You know, so I think that that plays a big factor. Um, we we sat down with a builder the other day, and they said pre COVID cabinets uh have now went up a hundred percent right so i mean that's wild <laughs> in a couple of years in a couple of years yeah yeah no, i completely agree what do you think that uh you know do you think that we're going to be still dealing with a lot of multiple offers as we as we come into uh, like september october do you think that well there's going to be a price point that's reached the, the reason i say that the mar- the market's going to go up five to ten percent and and that's because of multiple offers right. Uh, I think that now people, and what might even increase it too, is that as we lower interest rates, right, the Bank of Canada decides to, to lower their rate, I think that's going to bring more people into the market that have been waiting, and they're going to spend that money, mm-hmm. right? And you're getting less from what you did. So if it goes up 10%, that house that was $500,000 now is now going for five fifty. That makes a big difference. So I think people are going to be racing to... Uh, getting that property. And I mean, if you've been looking as a buyer and you've been seeing these prices and what's been happening, it doesn't even make sense Well, uh, for a lot of people, right? You've so, had to adjust what you're looking for in a home because prices have increased so so quickly right, in that regard, yeah. right? Is that, you know, obviously interest rates play a factor. Is it they don't have, you know, they don't have as much, uh, I guess, purchasing power when it comes down to being proved for a little bit more with the higher interest rates. But I agree with you is that as soon as interest rates start to reduce is that we're going to notice that there's even less inventory on the market right. and prices will will continue to rise who knows exactly how much right but there's a lot of different factors that will play but is it it all comes back to supply and demand unfortunately uh another question i had from a client was do i sell first or do i buy first do you want to be homeless? <laughs> That's not a funny joke, no. but at the same time, it's uh, it, it's relative because our if you look at the east side of the city, our rental rate I think is less than one percent. People say if they go to fi- try to find a rental, they're seeing a hundred applicants. So mm-hmm. that's when Ryan was just saying, do you want to be homeless? Because you got to find a place to go. And if you do find that place, you're locked in for the next 12 months. So and it's not just finding a place. It's finding the, the home with the right, you know, the needs and wants that you're looking at. Is that a lot of the times when I'm dealing with buyers on that side is that we're going out, we're seeing, um, you know, different properties that will give us an idea of the location. They give us an idea of the style of the home, the square footage, what's going to meet for them for the lifestyle of their family. But that home isn't available on the market today is that we need to do our research. And then when it actually hits the market, we need to be ready to go. 
right? Yeah. So is it, you know, I know it's not something to joke about. And that's why a lot of the times is that we're buying. And then just because of the strength in the market right now is that we know that we can potentially get multiple offers on the property, but, or, or, or not. But at the same time is that we're still looking at selling within the first week or two. Yeah. I, I think one thing that I think we've been good at is giving people, here's your worst case scenario. So this is how you make your decision, but we aim for the best. But if you're making your decision on the worst case, then you're comfortable buying that property, mm -hmm. knowing that you're taking a risk. But we haven't missed on that before, right? To where that person wasn't able to sell that property because you've already built that worst case scenario into it. The worst case scenario is if you sell your house and you don't find something for six months and now the rest of the real estate markets went up 15%, now what are you buying, right? Because then now you're going to panic buy into something that you don't want. I've always looked at is that unless you're getting something better than you're already in, why are you going to sell your property? I mean, that depends if you're right sizing or downsizing on that side of things. But mm -hmm. I mean, it's all relative. You want to stay in the market so that you're going to reap the rewards while you're then yeah. buying. We're not just moving to move. You're moving for, you know, lifestyle changes or, you know, you know, different things that have happened in your life that have changed your needs in a home. For sure. And everybody's got a different, like every person we give a different strategy to, but they're quite a bit similar depending on where people are at. For sure. Yeah. No, I completely agree. What would you say? I get a client this all, that asks me this all the time. When was when when is the best time to buy? Yesterday. You mean yeah, like yesterday. Yeah, I agree. Yesterday. Um, is that just because? Sorry to interrupt, but is that just because property values are going up? Yeah, I, I, I don't think waiting is going to help you, yeah. um, especially if you're a first time home buyer. Like if you're a first time home buyer, um, those properties on Lind, and I might be a little bit off with my numbers, but I think last fall, those townhouses with a finished basement were selling for like $285,000. Mm -hmm. And now that townhouse is selling for, so I was, sorry, it was a townhouse selling for 285000 Now that same townhouse is selling for 350000 I get it. Um, and then if you look at, we saw such a, we were almost in a recession from 2016 to 2020. The, the, the houses went drop probably about 15 to 20%. Townhouses a little bit more. And then condos probably took a 35% hit. Mm -hmm. They haven't seen the rebound because during COVID, nobody wanted to live in a condo or an apartment building or so forth. So we've seen those townhouses rebound. Now it's the condos now that are starting to go. I listed a property in a condo building. We did an evaluation. It sold, the last one sold for 242.5. Uh, the week we were going to list it, the, the next condo that we saw sold for 259.9. So then we had to adjust those, that, the same condo in the same building went up about $45,000 within three months. Right. So it was just every single property was priced about five to 10 grand higher and it just kept on going. And that condo building actually still hasn't got their original prices. I think people are still, when they originally bought, bought in for 320. Right. So it still hasn't went up and we went from 240 to about 285, right? Yeah. So I guess to answer your question is that it keeps on going up so much. I don't know when it stops. It's when people's buying power stops. But we have also a lot of people coming back from BC, which now these houses are a deal. Right. And so um, it's it's just a different mindset that you have to be prepared for and to be educated into what scenario you're going to be in what price range. Well, you shared a stat and I don't know the exact numbers, but you said about in 2015, I think the average housing prices were what, 115? I, I thought it was, I, I mean, I remember Roughly. one. I, I mean, yeah. remember one. I think 118. But I mean, I also saw a stat that I think we shared on social media that if a, if a property was priced at 128000 in 2015, that same house would be today selling for 405000 So In 2005. 2005. So, yeah. oh, did I say 15? 15. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> like, My mistake. In, yeah. two, in 2005, that yeah. property was 128. Now that same property would be 405. Yeah. And historically is that even, you know, you look farther back in the charts as well too, is that property values are continue to rise. So in the end result, the only answer to that is that, you know, when you can get into your first property, that is the time when you should be buying is you need to grow with the market. Otherwise you're going to be left behind. For sure. And, but at the same time, you also don't want to be house poor. 
right? You want to be able to buy in your means. And a lot but, of people nowadays want to buy their dream house right off the very beginning. And it's just getting into the real estate market where something that you can afford and then working towards that. That, that would be my major suggestion and something I think we both promote to our clients is for sure. not buying outside of your means, right? So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, thanks, Greg. This has been, uh, you know, a great episode for us and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing it on. Yeah, that's Anything awesome. else you want to? No, I mean, if you, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions of different topics uh, that we want to, that you want us to cover, please share them on our social media, messages us, DM us, and we will then bring that into our podcast and then be able to cover it uh, next month. Right. And uh, we appreciate you watching. And if you want to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and so forth, We'd appreciate it. Give us a share. Uh, like us. Uh, we enjoy what we do. We just want to be able to show, show more value to uh, our clients and our community. And you can also just give us a call. We're nice guys. Yeah, if you, yeah. Want, an eva- yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you, want, if you want an evaluation uh, on your property, uh, we're the ones to call. So we'd appreciate it.